morning and welcome to the Ultimate West Wing Challenge. More Four's answer to the question, why don't we do a quiz about the West Wing? <laughs> now, if you're a fan of the show, you'll know that after seven series and no fewer than 154, count them, 154 episodes, the sun finally sets over the West Wing tonight. Here to test their knowledge, we've assembled two teams of West Wing devotees, all four huge fans of the series. On my left, we have one of British television's hottest talents from the RSC to Doctor Who via Casanova and Blackpool. It's David Tennant. David, a man who knows a press pack when he sees one, London Bureau Chief of Newsweek magazine, Stryker Maguire. <laughs> On my right, actress, comedian and columnist Arabella Weir and Liberal Democrat MP and dedicated follower of Bartlett, Mark Oaten. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Now, those are the introductions we decided on for the programme. What you didn't see was the first draft. Getting the tone right is a skill that takes years of practice. Here are Will and Toby practicing. Here's what it should be. In a triumph of the middling, a nod to mediocrity, and with gorge rising, it gives me great nausea to announce Robert Russell, bingo bop himself, as your new vice president. This laugh dog of mining interests is as dull as he is unremarkable. As lackluster as he is soporific. Good. This reversion to the mean. This rebuke to the exemplary. Gives hope to the millions unfavored by the exceptional. Yes. The vice presidency being famously once described as not being worth a warm bucket of spit. Let's now hawk a big loogie for Bob Russell. Not the worst. Not the best. Just what we're stuck with. Amen. <laughs> Can anyone remember what happened after that? It got leaked, didn't it? No, I think it ended up on the autocue. Yeah, Bartlett was reading it and suddenly had to make it all up. You made it all up. Has that ever happened in real life? Stryker, you're yeah. the journalist. It has happened in real life. I know it happened to Bush on one occasion. Uh, I think it was in the run-up to the United Nations vote on Iraq. Right. Does that sound right, yeah. Mark? Yeah. Well, yeah, nothing on? important then. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He meant to say, we're not going to war, and the rest is history. <laughs> OK, round one, which for the sake of argument we'll call the primaries. We want the teams to identify who is speaking and fill in the missing words. Off we go, here's the first quote. You have a big brain, a good heart and a what the size of Montana? Is it A, a chip on your shoulder, B, an ego or C, a dick? <laughs> it's, it's not C. <laughs> good call. It's a chip on your shoulder. No, it isn't. Nope. It's ego. We, we, it's an ego. No, it's okay. You claim that one. Okay, Arabella is an ego. And moving on. If you were in an accident, I wouldn't stop for A, laughing, B, all the tea in China, or C, red lights. <laughs> Does it for me every time. <laughs> it's red lights. One dollar, Arabella. Victory is mine. I drink from the keg of glory. Donna, bring me the finest what and... Ooh. Muffins and bagels and it's Josh. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right. The next one. There are two things. Okay, I'll do this. I'll, okay. We get Since one. you're smart with the character, I'll do the voice of this one. There are two things you never want to let people see how you make them. That's not very good. <laughs> That's Donna, right? <laughs> there are two things you never want to let people see how you make them. Laws and sausages, promises and sushi, or love and pate. It's got to be loaves and sausages. Yep, and it was? Well, that was an immaculate Leo impression. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Lady, the god you pray to is busy getting what? Is it A, laid, B, oh. even, or C? Indicted for tax fraud. Absolutely, well That's done. It. OK, one more in this round. Uh, why don't you take your legislative agenda and A, shove it up your ass, B, push it through, or C, move to Montana? <laughs> A. I'm not saying what it is. Shove it up your ass, you're dead right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, right, after the primaries, we can just see, indeed, yes, that uh, David and Stryker's team are just ahead. Well done. <laughs> now, one of the West Wing's many strengths has been the relationship between the characters. The dialogue's fast, snappy and fizzing with wit and cultural references. That's why it would never work over here. <laughs> but it has its gentler moments, too. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in the hall. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, Hey, you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hole and moves on. 
Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole, can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me, can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. As long as I got a job, you got a job, you understand? Why was Josh in a hole? Um, was that when he'd said uh, the, the, the anti-God thing on the... Uh... He'd just been shot. He had. He, exactly, he'd been shot. Oh. He, had, he was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. He did uh, also get in trouble for saying the anti-God thing on... Yeah, but we were mainly looking for the uh, shot question. Sure. Thank you. sure. <laughs> You can't retrospectively claim points from previous rounds <laughs> unless you go to Florida. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, now the next round is called Walk and Talk and it requires a cool head, a sharp memory and most importantly, some legs. The show's signature camera work follows the characters around the White House, down corridors, in and out of offices, up and down stairs, often in one shot. They make it look easy, but to show you just how difficult it is, we're going to ask David and Arabella to take a walk here in the studio while at the same time answering a series of questions. If they don't give me the answer I'm looking for, they're going to have to work harder and move faster. <laughs> the winner is the one who's still breathing at the end. David and Arabella, walk with me. Thank you. Now, at this point, David and Arabella are going to take up positions on a travelator conveniently situated in the White House garden. <laughs> OK, you're in the Rose Garden. Very, very convincingly shot, I think. <laughs> Arabella, what are you doing? Are you putting running shoes on? Yeah, because I've obviously... Doing? I've got the ideal shoe for this. <laughs> OK, walk with me. Ooh. Off you go. <laughs> okay. Yes, and we've been doing, we've been doing West Wing style walking. Okay, where is Kumar? It's um, on the in, a fictional it's Middle in, Eastern country. It's in uh, yeah. the Arabian Iran. Gulf. Okay, thank you. Why did Bartlett think the Kumari Defence Minister Sharif was a terrorist? Because he was going to blow up the Golden Gate Bridge. That's right. How did Bartlett deal with the terrorist threat? They, he assassinated, uh, they assassinated the Defence Secretary. Quicker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who did Kumar initially blame for the assassination? Uh, Israel. Well, they, they, Israel. Okay. When did the assassination become public? Um, um, after Zoe was abducted, just a, and that's oh. and Bartlett had to take time out. Keep yeah. going. Who discovered the assassination? Uh, oh, oh. Da Danny. Uh, Danny, King it's Cannon. CJ's boyfriend. Okay. During the kidnap, whom did Bartlett temporarily relinquish his powers to? Uh, John Goodman. Uh, no. uh, Walker. <laughs> faster. No, faster. <laughs> okay. Finally, how did Walker respond to the kidnapping? He bombed the. It's just David it now. <laughs> okay. Well done, David and Arabella. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well done, both of you. The opinion polls are showing that, uh, well, David did very well, but I think for sheer effort, Arabella just wins that contest. Well done. <laughs> and can I point out that no contestants were harmed during the filming of that <laughs> round? Why are you getting a breath back? There's more to being the American president than running the most powerful country in the world. There are also more pressing issues, like how to stuff a turkey. <laughs> and how can I help you? Stuffing should be stuffed inside the turkey. Am I correct? It can also be baked in a casserole dish. Well, then we'd have to call it something else, wouldn't we? I suppose. If I cook it inside the turkey, is there a chance I could kill my guests? I'm not saying that's necessarily a deal breaker. Well, there are some concerns. Two main bacterial problems are salmonella and campylobacter jejuna. All right. Well, first of all, I think you made the second bacteria up. And second of all, how do I avoid it? Make sure all the ingredients are cooked first. Saute any vegetables, fry sausage, oysters, etc. Excellent. Let's talk temperature. 165 degrees. No, see, I was testing you. The USDA calls for turkeys to be cooked to an internal temperature of 180 to 185 degrees. Yes, sir. I was talking about the stuffing, which you want to cook to 165 to avoid the health risks. Okay. Good testing. that 2,000 years ago, a Roman citizen could walk across the face of the known world free of the fear of molestation. He could walk across the earth unharmed, cloaked only in the protection of the word civis romanus, 
I am a Roman citizen. So great was the retribution of Rome, universally understood as certain, should any harm befall even one of its citizens. Where was Morris's protection, or anybody else on that airplane? Where is the retribution for the families? And where is the warning to the rest of the world that Americans shall walk this earth unharmed, lest the clenched fist of the most mighty military force in the history of mankind comes crashing down on your house? In other words, Leo, what the hell are we doing here? Welcome back to the Ultimate West Wing Challenge. That clip was about a fictional terrorist attack. After 9-11, Aaron Sorkin wrote a special standalone episode about the issues surrounding the bombing of the Twin Towers. Can anyone remember what it's called? Isaac Ishmael and Ishmael. Yeah. And it was, Isaac. It was Isaac and Ishmael. Now, the show is often praised for its realism, but the makers stressed that it is a fictional drama set in the White House. And as if to prove the point, Jed Bartlett is a highly intelligent, well-read and <laughs> compassionate leader. Any resemblance to the current occupant of the White House is... Well, very unlikely. <laughs> Jed Bartlett's combination of intelligence, dignity and humour made him the most popular president America never had, combining an astute political brain with an encyclopedic mind for trivia, or as it used to be called, general knowledge. <laughs> the next round is called Head to Head with Jed. <laughs> he knew the answer to all these questions, but do you? We'll start with Arabella's team, and this is on national parks. <laughs> Which president was a former ranger at Yellowstone Park? Was it Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, or George Bush Sr.? Let's say Ford Sr. Final answer? Final answer. You're quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris. It was Gerald Ford. Well done. David and Stryker, what are visitors to Glacier Park told to do to keep the bears away? Is it A, surround their camp with urine, B, sing, or C, carry flaming torches? I like the urine. Uh, urine, thing, yeah. urine is good. Yeah, we'll go urine. urine. You're going for urine? I'm afraid you're wrong. It was sing. Oh, well. Moving on. The Federated States of Micronesia is next. Mark and Arabella, where is the US Embassy located? Is it on the island of Pompeii, on the island of Yap, or on the island of Chuuk? <laughs> <laughs> what was it again? My <laughs> It's on Yap. Yap, Yap, Yap. No, you went for the wrong one. It was Pompeii. Oh. <laughs> uh, David and Stryker, which of these is a famous Micronesian legend? Is it A, the legend of the Yapi's dolphin man, B, the legend of the Chuki's love stick, or C, the legend of the Pompeii parsnip pot? It's, it's got to be two or B, whichever that second one. Do you think? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be, apparently. The Chuki's love stick. Yeah. Going for. Okay, right. Well done. Traditionally made from a piece of wood, a young Chuk man would carve his own special design into the handle and present it to a woman. At night, the man would jab his love stick through the hut walls of his lover <laughs> and wake her up with its sharp point without alarming her parents. She would again feel the handle in the dark and by recognising the symbols carved in it, she would know that it was him. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. OK, according to the latest opinion polls, we have David and Stryker in the lead. Well done. Thank you. All right. Now, another clip. CJ's trademark is staying in control, but there are some things even she can't control. Remember this? I'll have Carol cancel the boyfriend. No, we're still doing it. Who? Me. No way. CJ. You get hot stuff. I get hot stuff? Hostile. Hostile. You get hostile. Don't get hostile. I don't get randomly hostile. I... Get hostile when hostility is called for. What Sam do it? Sam went to a foggy bottom. What's he doing at foggy bottom? I'm sorry. I just wanted to see if I could make you say foggy bottom. Sam's working with the speechwriters. Toby? Toby's with Leo and the president. Josh. Hey there, cats and kittens. This is Josh Lyman coming at you with your two o'clock briefing. Josh, please be very careful. Try very, very hard not to destroy us. You shouldn't say that, CJ. You got a great body. <laughs> It's a fabulous scene. What was wrong with CJ? She'd had root canal. She'd had root canal. You're right. OK, how well did Josh cope with the subsequent press conference? <laughs> badly. In a word, very badly, which brings us to our own press conference round. As White House press spokesman, CJ has to cope with whatever questions are thrown at her and deal with them with an air of calm and authority. Now, it's the team's turn. Mark and Stryker, you've been on opposite ends of press conferences in your time. Mark as a Lib Dem MP and Stryker as a politician. Oh, I'm sorry, as a, as a journalist. <laughs> Uh, you each have to make an announcement taken from an episode of the series and answer questions without flapping, without losing the plot, and above all, without answering the question. <laughs> Mark, off you go. Right. OK, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first off, I'd like to confirm that that unidentified object which was tracked over Mai has in fact not been a uh, UFO, but is a Russian satellite which uh, broke up and failed to return to ground. 
Can I also confirm that the myth that there is some kind of spacecraft in Fort Knox is also something which is a total myth? Uh, Mr. Rodden, is it true that of the 8,500 metric tons of gold originally stored at Fort Knox, only 1,000 remain? Um, is your pass due for renewal shortly? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I was just wondering, if the empty space isn't occupied by the Papoose Lake spacecraft, what is in there? I think there's only one empty space unoccupied at the moment, and I think we know where that is. <laughs> I think you just got hostile. <laughs> Next question, please. Wouldn't it make sense for the president to go so, so as to reassure the country? I think he has full confidence that President Truman made a thorough investigation of that. A long time ago. <laughs> president Truman was one of the great presidents of this country. If you're saying that he wasn't, then I think that's disrespectful. <laughs> Is it true that 7,500 metric tons of gold have gone missing? You and I both know that there are things that we know that we don't know that we can confirm that are, are, <laughs> that are things that, that we all know in this room that are, are there, that are issues that need to be talked about. And I think that in a round way, that really deals with the question. Do you want to... <laughs> Do you want a job as American Defence Secretary? <laughs> Better than the one I've got now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oakley. Thank you very much, gentlemen. OK, Stryker, it's your turn to step to the plate for your press conference. And yours is on the subject of Pluey the Wolf. Indeed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we get into issues of national security and the president's health, I have an important announcement to make. Uh, CJ, C can I yes. ask, has this replaced the uh, 11 o'clock uh, press briefing that we were supposed to be having? Is that the one you're doing now, or is it the one we were told about earlier? Both. OK. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the one that was going to be the 11 o'clock, and now it's now. You know, I have, this, I have this really important announcement to make. It's about a wolf. CJ, CJ, are we going to get the briefing that we were going to be getting later in the day, or is this replacing that briefing completely? You're going to get that tomorrow from Josh. Tomorrow. Right, from Josh. Yeah. <laughs> That's the briefing okay. we were going to get today, and that news is being held over to tomorrow. I'm going to the dentist shortly, and I'd okay. appreciate it if you just let me finish. Okay. Well, I'm so afraid that's all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, would you like to give us the briefing? Yes. Scientists recently tracked a wolf called Pluey as she made her way from Banff National Park in Alberta up and down the Rockies. In the course of four years, Pluey made three round trips between Canada and Wyoming, covering 40,000 square miles. What is your point, CJ? Is the this point to cover is the amount of dead this... soldiers in Iraq, CJ? Is this like one of those kind of pilot stories you just send out to make us not ask questions about Iraq? This is about the environment. This is about, it's also about, the, not talking about Iraq. the future right? of the wolf. <laughs> What are you intending to do with the wolf? This, we're going to save the wolf. You're going to send it back to Canada. Although, as you'll see, toward the end of this announcement, the wolf... If you make it. The where, wolf, is Pluey, where is Pluey now? The wolf is dead. You've killed the, you've killed the wolf. <laughs> Sorry. I, How will you avoid this happening in the future? It's funny you should ask that question, because that is the heart of this announcement, which is we are going to build a highway, a wolf highway. <laughs> So can we go with that headline, President Bartlett killed the wolf? This is an issue. This is an issue of real National importance people. to the president and, and even to other people. <laughs> OK, CJ, we will return to that subject, I'm sure, later on. Thank you very much, Dean Stryker Maguire. Well done. OK, if we have a quick look at the opinion polls, I think that Mark and Arabella lead David and Stryker. Now, if you've ever had a bad day at the office, you'll have some idea what it's like to be Josh in this next clip. Are you the unmitigated jackass who has the DNC choking off funding for the O'Dwyer campaign in the California 46th? What in God's name is happening right now? I'm Joey Lucas. You're Joey Lucas? No, I'm Joey Lucas. Help me, because I, I don't... You idiot! I'm Joey Lucas! Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, okay. I'm Josh Lyman. I know who you are. You're Joey Lucas? What were you expecting? A uh, man. <laughs> okay, anyone know why Josh was dressed like that? He'd spent the night at the office. Nope. He'd been to a party the night before? Yeah, absolutely right. He had been on a stag night and came back in a pair of sailing trousers. <laughs> now, with time running out and the score's still pretty close, we've come to the final round, which is entitled West Winging It. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, could have been West minging it for the liberal. <laughs> <laughs> OK, quick fire round. The object is to ask as many questions as possible in time available. So fingers on buzzers. Off we go. What is POTUS? 
Okay, David. President, president of the United States. President of the United States. The name used for the president when people are paged by the White House. Who okay. said, I'll kill you with my shoe? David and Stryker. Mandy. Mandy, well done. What kind of snack food does CJ like? Okay, goldfish Over. crackers. Goldfish crackers, oh. three out of three. Who wrote the West Wing theme tune? David and Stryker. WG Snuffy Wall. <laughs> <laughs> you are very, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> who is a Democratic candidate who runs for president in Series 7? Ah, welcome to the party, Arabella and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Santos. Absolutely right. What did Zoe and Charlie bury to dig up when Zoe graduated? <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so you're getting a bit hostile with the yeah. bell. Okay. Yeah. A bottle of champagne. Yeah. Who designed the black dress CJ tries on with her niece? Oh, um, uh, is, uh um... I know this. Uh, um, Not Vera Wong. Vera, Vera Wang. Vera Wang. <laughs> right. Which British newspaper snaps Sam with a call girl? Oh, Arabella and Mark. The Mirror. The Mirror. You're absolutely right. What job does Charlie initially interview for? Messenger boy. Well done. Which cast member originally trained to be an Olympic figure skater? CJ. You're coming back very strongly. Who is Santos's rival for the presidency? Arnie. Oi. Arnie Vinnick. Arnie Vinnick is right. Who is known as Uncle Fluffy? It's, that was a dead heat. It's not heat. working, Let's, hello. No, no, I, it's okay, I heard your hand. I, I heard the gentle sound of Arabella Weir's dainty... <laughs> dainty <laughs> palm going... <laughs> the president. Okay. What French term of endearment does Jed call Abby? Yes. Cherie? No. no. Mon, mon petit fromage. Very good, well done. Who's Very the adjunct good. professor of thoracic surgery at Harvard Medical School? In real life? <laughs> That's like, um, that was one of those Melvin Bragg introductions on start of the week, isn't it? That's Hello. right. Today I'm joined by the President of Thoracic Surgery at Harvard Medical School, <laughs> the Emeritus Professor of Windsurfing I... at Athens. <laughs> so who is it? Abby Bartlett. Abby Bartlett, well done. What board game does the President regularly play? David and Stryker. Chess. Chess. What is the name of Santos's wife? Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Mm. We don't know. First Lady Elect. Not bad, but can you put a name to her? Helen. Helen. <laughs> Helen. The audience just pipped you at the end. I'm I... <laughs> so the audience actually win that round. Well done. <laughs> but I'm afraid under the laws of the American electoral system, I'm not allowed to have that. We have to have a winner here in the studio between Mark and Arabella and Stryker and David. And if we look at the opinion polls, we see that David and Stryker are the winners. Aww. Well done. <laughs> OK, it's time, not that that's a concept that David Tennant and Doctor Who recognise, <laughs> but it is time to thank both teams, Arabella Weir and Mark Oden. Well done. And David Tennant and Stryker Maguire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>《Showtime for Larry's Restaurant》tomorrow. Can he expect things to go without a hitch? Of course he can't. Curb tomorrow from 10. Next, GBH.